They knew exactly where she was. And it was an intention to eliminate that voice that was speaking out and saying what was happening was horrific and unacceptable. She was eliminated because of her voice. She was danger to the continuation of the likes of the Assad regime because she exposed the crimes that were being committed by the Assad regime and because she was considered a credible individual in the West and she could change the minds and hearts of people to understand what was actually happening in this country. Assad sent out a very clear message to the Syrian people and to those that witnessed what was happening in Syria, like Marie Colvin. And it was, it's either Assad or we burn the country. Syria has been burnt. And the people that tried to expose that this is what Assad was doing have been burnt as well. Marie Colvin's one of those people. Remy Ochlik is one of those people. There are many other journalists that have paid that price because they tried to expose those crimes. Assad will do anything to stay on his chair. The Syrian raid regime will do anything to stay on that chair. Marie Colvin's death was part of a systematic targeting of journalists carried out by the Syrian regime on Syrian journalists and foreign journalists. And Homs was really one of the first cities that witnessed almost total destruction. And the city was almost, most of its areas were totally leveled to the ground. So this media center served as a hub where journalists who were coming from abroad and journalists who remained abroad and wanted to report on Syria were able to access information from, from the people that worked in this hub. Ali Osman, uh, who was the head of the office, he was arrested, uh, detained by the government. He was forced to go on state television and um, express a narrative that was more that that the government wanted, that there were terrorists, that he had made a mistake. He wishes he didn't do it. He was forced to do that. To this day, Ali Osman, no one knows his whereabouts. <laughs> Rami Sayed died hours before Marie Colvin and Rami Elchlik. Rami worked in the same media office. Um, Rami was well known in Syria by Syrians, mainly people in Homs, of his bravery and his attempt continuously to expose the crimes being committed by the Assad regime. Rami was a citizen journalist who picked up a camera because he believed that this was the way that we were going to win this war. That we had to show everyone else in the world, and we had to depend on the conscience of those around the world to form public support, public pressure against governments that are involved in Syria. He died uh, whilst covering uh, an attack by the Syrian government on Homs. Marami was a very brave person. Marie Colvin's death had a very big effect on the coverage of Syria by the West. It was a shock that came to a lot of journalists that the Syrian government was capable of this. This frightened a lot of journalists and this affected uh, the coverage. It caused censorship and it opened the way for the Syrian government to expose and amplify its narrative uh, and its counterpart's narrative that really this was just uh, a terrorist uprising rather than civilians defending themselves from the likes of a government that was using excessive means of killing, attacking, starving, isolating civilians. When a journalist is invited to Damascus and given access, there's a minder that goes everywhere with this journalist. They're not allowed to speak to who they want. And I think it means that to some extent, as a journalist, you let go of principle. You know that you cannot get the story that you want from an area that is controlled by Assad. Four young men being killed. I mean, you see a lot of teenage young men, um, but they're going out to try to just help get the wounded to some kind of medical treatment. So they're, they're just, it's a complete and utter lie that they are only going after terrorists. The Syrian army is simply shelling a city of cold, starving civilians. I think if today Marie Colvin were here, she would say, she would have a few things to add. Chemical weapons, barrel bombs, elephant missiles, ground invasions, door-to-door -door killings, executions, torture of thousands of people to death in Syrian intelligence branches. These are all things that came later. But I think that she, if she was still reporting on this, 
think she would be disgusted that she still had to tell this story and that nothing was happening. Assad was responsible for the death of Marie Colvin and Remy Ochlik and many other citizen journalists across Syria. How can we accept this man still in power? How can we accept that?